Kerry and I am talking really quietly because I am in the conservatory. Um, hopefully when I go back to this video um, to sort of watch it, um, you will be able to hear me and it's not a waste of my time. Um, but one of the main reasons that I'm talking really quietly is because um, in the place that I'm in, I feel like I'm probably being heard by the neighbours that are sort of right next to me. And that's one of the things I want to talk about right now in this video is the challenges as an urban homesteader. Um, I find it really difficult to live the life that I want to live in a building surrounded by lots of other buildings. Um, so the, the building that we live in is a masonette and it's above the shop that we run. So initially when we bought the place eight years ago, I thought fantastic, you know, work's only downstairs, this is going to be brilliant and it suited the sort of lifestyle of really young children. Um, it, it, it felt like the right thing to do. It, it was going to be a stopgap home between where I wanted to be in the future, which is to have a small holding, as I've talked about before, um, and sort of, the, it was a stopgap, it was running the shop, living above it until we could afford to buy a small holding somewhere a lot more rural, somewhere a lot more private. Um, unfortunately, the stopgap has now turned into um, eight, nine years and highly looking like we're going to be stuck here for quite a bit longer. Um, and that isn't really good for my mental health. Um, it's fine for the business, um, but, you know, it's it's not doing amazingly well with everything that's going on. Obviously the business we run is arts and crafts and I have obviously the small garden that you can see behind me. And um, I do as much as I can. I work really, really hard. Um, I was working six days a week. That made me really poorly. So I've cut down to five days a week now. I say I work five days a week. That's when the shop is open. Um, but in addition to that, I obviously work on lots of other projects to try and bring in lots of other income streams because running the shop doesn't fund everything that we need as a family. My husband works full time as well. Um, yeah, so there's lots of challenges trying to, to run as an urban homestead. The most difficult one for me is constantly feeling surrounded by people. Um, my mental health is not great. Uh, I really struggle with social anxiety. I, I can't stand going into busy places. I don't even like going shopping. Um, I can deal with small shops with small amounts of people but I can't go to supermarkets. In fact, it makes me really quite ill for the hours that I'm there and then the hours after. It's like I have a social battery and once it's drained, it takes a long time for it to recharge. Um, so whenever I look grumpy or <laughs> uh, if I look like I'm not enjoying myself when I'm out and about, it's usually me just trying to battle this like social battery that I have. When I'm in the shop, I seem to, my shop, I seem to be okay because I seem to be able to be in a sense of a different personality. This is me, I am working, and and then, you know, that person leaves after a little while and I feel okay. But in an other environment that isn't my own, I find it really challenging. And so an urban homestead for me is a challenge in that I want to be somewhere more rural. I want to be not surrounded by lots of other people and lots of other houses. And it's not that I don't get on with the neighbours, I don't actually know any of them. Um, it's purely that there's other voices and other sounds all of the time. I can always hear other people. I can't film in the garden, I can't do voiceovers in the garden because people can hear me and that makes me really nervous. I feel like I'm being judged all the time. Um, I've tried and I do do them now and then, but it takes a lot of courage for me to do that because I feel while I'm doing it nervous. I feel nervous right now because I know there's windows that can actually see me doing this from other people's houses, can actually see into my conservatory. Um, and so it's making me really nervous even doing this. But I can try and do them and sometimes that's successful and I'll do the voiceover video showing you the garden. There's so much more I'd love to share with you about my gardening process and what I do. I just feel really silly and Although that seems strange because I'm sharing it with you guys and there's a lot more people out there than there are neighbours, but you can't see me, so, and I don't feel judged by you, <laughs> which is odd, um, but I do by the neighbours because I see them every day and maybe I don't, I don't know. Um, so yeah, one of the main challenges is being surrounded by people and 
um, constant chitter chatter, feeling judged, and you know all that sort of thing. So that's one of the main challenges is being in a in a sort of built up area with lots of neighbours close to me. Um, another challenge in an urban homestead is space. Um, we have a tiny courtyard garden and as you can see most of it's concrete in fact everything you see growing is all in a pot it's all in planters nothing is growing in the ground because this isn't even ground that you can grow in this raised part here um, so a big challenge in this urban homestead is no ground growing space and that means there's the constant changing over of pots constantly having to get good quality compost which i try and make as much as we can ourselves because the cost of compost is constantly rising um so yeah there's the constant potting on nothing ever stays very long in one pot it always needs to go into the next size um i can't grow nearly as much as i would like to grow um, and all the seedlings that you see dotted around, you know, I'll grow as many as I can, sell some in the shop, put some in the garden, put some in our small allotment. And our allotment isn't that much bigger than this small courtyard garden, to be honest. So space, lacking of space is a challenge that we definitely face as a, an urban homestead. Uh, one of the other things is um, we don't have the greatest of kitchens. Um, the kitchen that we do have has no extractor fan, which is an absolute nightmare. Um, that was a fault by the people who put the kitchen in. The extractor fan was in the plans, um, they didn't do it, and then we were left without one, and we haven't had one for the seven years we've been here. Um, so there's no extractor fan, which means we have the windows open, and that does what it does, but it doesn't do enough. So we, want, we have like a damp problem when we're doing much cooking, which for someone who wants to be, you know, having an urban homestead is a nightmare because I want to be pickling, I want to be making jams, I want to be baking fresh goods, you know, it's a real challenge. Um, so I can't do the amount of cooking and preserving that I'd like to do. To be honest, I do do quite a bit and I just ignore the fact that everything gets damp. I try and dry it all down, all the steam that it produces and everything. Um, I try to dry it all down. It means the kitchen gets hot, so we don't spend much time in the kitchen, which is frustrating because as a family, I'd love to eat at the table together a bit more. Um, but we don't tend to stay in there, especially through the summer at the table very much because it's like a kitchen diner. Um, we don't stay in there very much then. It's far too hot. Um, so we tend to sort of eat in different rooms. Um, yeah, what else? There's there's lots of things. I can't... I've forgotten them all. I should have written notes for this video, shouldn't I? Um, there's lots of things that I wish could be different. I can't have any animals. That's another one in this urban home setting. I can't have any animals because we haven't got a big enough garden. Um, although we could probably convert what is um, a shed in this tiny garden into a chicken coop and maybe have a chicken run. Um, I would again worry about the neighbours and the judgment and all of that sort of things. So we haven't done that. Um, so yeah, no livestock, no animals is another thing. Um, and a limit to what I can do in terms of a business as well because I want to be running the small holding that we get eventually as a business and I want to be as self-sufficient as possible um, so we're limited to how self-sufficient we can be here we rely completely on um, we can't have solar power for example it wouldn't work in the masonette in the building that we're in but I'd love to look into that for the future um, when we get small holding we do rainwater collecting we do have water butts here so I do collect as much as I can to water the garden but there's no way of looking into any system for the home so I can't even look into many self-sufficient um, things because of the type of building that this is it's you know it's terraced and it's you know mason it above the commercial unit which is the shop so it really does although I try and teach you how we make the best of being an urban homestead I think there's also um, a reason to be honest with you in this video and in you know the follow-up vlog that I'll do that it isn't I'm not pretending that urban homesteading is easy and I'm not pretending that it's um, as joyful as what I can imagine being on a small holding is you know and I, I know it's hard work I'm not doubting that at all but I know it will pay back so much mentally um, and it will feel much more like an achievement and it will be more freedom and for someone like me especially in my family I know that that outside space will be an absolute godsend. It will be fantastic when we eventually get there, if we eventually get there. So yeah, I thought it'd be on, worth being honest about living in an urban homestead 
is there's lots of things you can do to try and make the best of what you've got but I understand that there'll be a lot of you like me that wish that you could jump straight into that small holding and rural homestead setting um, because of the things like what I've just mentioned today you know it, there's a lot of things that we can't do and we're restricted on doing that I know if we had a more rural setting with land um, and less neighbours we'd be able to do a lot more of so you're not alone if you're feeling all of the things I've just mentioned I will apologise for the state of me as well because I have just come down to do this video completely you know randomly as you do <laughs> um, so yeah Thanks for listening to me rattle on about the sort of the challenges of an urban homestead lifestyle. Hopefully um, you found it useful and relatable if you are like me, dreaming of that small holding life, dreaming of having a home with some land, but you're stuck in an urban setting, you know, in a town, in a terraced house with a tiny little garden. You know, you're not alone. That's me too. <laughs> Um, a lot of people think because I've got my own shop and you know run my own business that I'm loving life and everything's perfect and rosy. It isn't. There's a lot of things that I would love to be able to do differently that I hope I can one day too. But the other side of things is we have got a roof over our head. We are growing some of our own food. We have still got each other and we've got our health. So we're thankful too. I hope you've enjoyed watching the video. Take care guys and don't forget to subscribe to follow me on my journey. I'm hopefully going to be doing a lot more shitty chatty videos um, where you can see what I'm doing uh, in the coming days. I'm hoping to build my confidence back up so I can uh, chat with you about our journey and um, yeah, how we're progressing and what we're trying to do to one day achieve that small holding goal. Take care. Bye bye.